Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of in our educational series. As always, my name is Spencer and I am so very excited for this topic today, guys. Today we're talking about liquidity and how it affects prices. The prerequisites to this episode is episode one, how are swap prices determined, and episode two, what is slippage. Liquidity has a really very large effect on slippage and we're going to use the equation from the first episode uh, in this one as well. So go back and watch those if you haven't seen them yet. Our key terms and definitions for today are liquidity, of course. Now liquidity is the dollar value of tokens held in the smart contract to allow for trading. Our next definition is liquidity provider. I'm sure you guys can guess what this one is. Someone who deposits tokens into a liquidity pool that allows other people to swap those tokens. The last one is an LP token. Now an LP token is a special token that a liquidity provider receives in return for depositing liquidity. Okay, It kind of acts as a proof of deposit and it can be used to unlock, redeem, or remove liquidity from a pool. It works exactly like a coat check. If anyone's ever been to a wedding and you drop off your coat with the guys at the front and they give you a little ticket and at the end of the night you give them the ticket back and get your coat back, it's exactly how a liquidity provider token works. All right, so let's jump into an example here. Liquidity helps keep the market liquid and prices stable. Let's see how that happens. Now, we'll set up this one just like every other example. We'll say B and B equals 500. And we'll put $10,000 worth of liquidity into our pool. Now, as we did in our previous example on slippage, if we were to put in, you know, a very small amount of BNB, 0.1, we know that it would cause this side of the pool to go up just a little bit and this side of the pool to come down just a little bit. And that would change the overall price of BNB in, in the pool by about $10. Well, what if we did something crazy like decided to put in 500 BNB into a pool that only has 10 BNB? Remember, because we have $10,000 worth of liquidity, we would have 10 BNB and 5 thousand BUSD. Well, let's see. If we put through 499 out of our 500 BNB, and let's say we had two BUSD left in the pool, it would come out to be 0 0.0004 BUSD per BNB in the pool. As we can understand, that's not good. We don't want this. This is a bad thing to have happen. You would be getting absolutely nothing for your BUSD and B. So how can we change this? How can we put a big order of BNB through a pool like this without completely wrecking everything? Well that is where liquidity comes into play. So let's reset this pool. And let's clean things up a little bit. Instead of $10,000 of liquidity, let's do 100 million. All right, that would give us 100,000 BNB and 50 million BUSD. Now, if we wanted to do this same equation again, and put through our 500 BNB and take out the corresponding amount of BUSD, the new equation would look like this. 49.75 million over 100,500 BNB. If we do the math on that, it comes out to 495.02. BUSD per BNP. As you can see, this number is much better looking than this number. And the reason that's happened is because there's more liquidity in the pool. There's more tokens, there's more dollar value 
to be able to facilitate larger trades moving through the pool. Does this mean that liquidity is always good and that more liquidity is always better? Not necessarily. In some cases, it might be beneficial for you to have a lower liquidity. Um, this could be in cases where maybe you wanna get a higher yield or a higher return from yield farming, or if you're looking to engage in market manipulation or something like that. So we can explain that in more detail in uh, future episodes, but this in a nutshell is how liquidity works. Nice and clean and simple for you. And that's all guys. This is how liquidity works in a nutshell. Thanks for tuning into this episode and I will see you all in the next one.